It is January 1942, and a new year dawns across the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. A new year with new generals, new strategies, new tactics, and a new invigorated spirit amongst the Russian people. It is now time for the Russians to gather their strength, to marshal themselves, gather up arms, and make a push towards pushing back the German invaders who have invaded from the West to push them out of Kiev. Welcome all to Global War 1936. We are playing Operation Varsity. I am playing as a commenter in Peoples. It is quite a fun game. Thank you all creators and designers who have contributed, and also the playtesters and the people who providing feedback into creating a very fantastic and fun game. I really do enjoy myself, and I think everybody should play this game. Well, <laughs> who has capability of it? Now, I play it on Tabletop Simulator, but I do have a, a physical copy. I just have too busy of a schedule to actually record on my physical table. But I do advise all players of Tabletop Simulator, that if you are going to play this game, then uh, at least at least tip your cap to the designers and creators of this game. And acknowledge that, you know, a person should actually own a physical copy of this game, just to just to assist the designers, the, the producers of historical board gaming, in their efforts to create and bring a good game to us. You know, we're playing it essentially for free. It's worthwhile at least to acknowledge that, right? That, that, that generosity of the people to create such a, a fun game. Anyways, welcome to Operation Varsity, Global War 1936, version 4. Let's take a look at what occurred for the Germans on this past turn. <coughs> the Germans strengthened their position here in Kiev. They now have something like 9 advanced mechanized infantry sitting here, and a quite formidable force. In western Ukraine, they also shored up their position and still gathered more strength, specifically more infantry class units to defend better behind this fortified line behind this river. The Germans have also captured Turidia, or Turida, over here next to Crimea, and so therefore we might need to push them out of that territory as well. And that is about it. They're just gathering their forces. They've re retreated from Podlachia, and now we wonder what their what their plans are in that neck of the woods. The Germans have also invaded the Netherlands, and now their fleet is somewhat exposed out here in season A23, which gives us an opportunity to launch ourselves through the neutral Danish Straits to attack them in that sea zone. And in the far east, we see that the Japanese have captured Chita. Last time they attempted this, they failed with their attack, and we managed to hold on to that territory. We, after that, re uh, redefended that position, and it wasn't enough. They managed to capture that territory without too many difficulties, which was good on their part, for sure. And so now we have to worry about our exposed territory. This position here could actually hit a few different territories, Central Mongolia, Buratia, and up here in Irkutsk, which is worth three bucks collectively between the three of them. So it is quite a sizable portion of terrain that we need to worry about, the real estate that we need to worry about. <coughs> Moving on from that, let us take a look at what our plans and intentions are for the Russian people. First, let's roll for some technology. Uh, I think that's worthwhile doing because we might need to plan out our turn a little bit more further. Now, since we don't own all four of our factories in peak condition, as the Russians have bombed one of our factories, we only get to roll three out of our four dice. Let's roll these three dice. It's color-coded towards what we have up there on the map. We have some pretty low numbers, with only the 12 succeeding, which is this one here for improved factories, which gets us the possibility of having um, T-34 tanks. So that's quite nice. The T-34 tanks. And that is that. We've completed that tech up here. So I'm going to delete these two dice. And I believe improved factors also increase the amount of units we can put on the board. So with that in mind, let's take a quick look at what we want to produce here. We can't get our katushas just yet. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still struggling with my with my sickness. So these are uh, for 10 bucks there. We're going to be building two railways. I know it says damage, but hey, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. We also want to... Um, repair some of the damage on our factory as well. Is it needed? I don't honestly know if it is needed, but nonetheless we're going to do it. So what does that bring us to? So I'm going to pull out a calculator here. So we have 49 bucks minus 10 for the tanks, and then I have something like 7 infantry here, which is 21, and I have 3 militia is 6. I'm going to build 2 railways, that's 8, and 3 leaves us 1 buck left over. Um, I think we won't spend that 1 buck. Yeah, let's just save that one buck. Why not? Let's let's just do that. Yeah, so that would bring us down to one buck left over. <coughs> Beg pardon. Okay, so C CCP, let's take a look at first. They control one territory. We're going to leave it to the Japanese to roll for their recruitment roll. We're going to place two units on the map. It's going to be two infantry here in Singhai, which brings us down to one buck left over. And that is that. So one buck on each one of those. That's quite handy. Now let's take a look at combat moves. Let's first do the Navy side of things. We're going to have a seaplane hit Gulf of Bothnia, and so we'll have two raining dice against that sea zone. 
We're going to have this submarine come down here, and we're going to engage this fleet in A23. This submarine's going to continue the attack there, and we have three destroyers, one light cruiser, one heavy cruiser, going to attack this position over here in A23. That is our course of action right now. This torpedo boat destroyer can't reach anywhere, so he's just going to hang out there. I think that'll be one, two. He can get close, but he can't. He can get here, but these three aircraft can scramble that position, so it's not advisable to do that at this stage. Okay, now we're going to make an attack here into... These units here are parked here, here in uh, whatever territory this is called. Donetsk Kuban. I just needed to move that into position, so I have that thematic effect screenshot. So these three guys are going to invade there, and... Then we're going to invade Kiev. So our 74th Army, which is a stack of units here, that's 3 infantry, 17 militia, 5 motorized, and we're going to add to that 3 cavalry, 2 light tanks, and we're going to say our 3, <coughs> big pardon, 2 fighters, and our tactical bomber coming from that airbase over here, and our transport plane is going to pick up an uh, airborne unit here and going to launch it into that fight as well. So that's all what's going into that territory. Um, 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 um. Over on the far east, we're gonna walk into um oops wrong one. We're gonna walk into Amur and capture recapture back for our purposes. And that is all our attacks on that side of the theater. That'll do. Let's get started with our attacks. Let's first do our convo rating. So we got one seaplane here. Now seaplanes when they roll, they, they don't get any pluses or minuses. So black is gonna be defender, red to the attacker, and uh so red is going to just be straight up whatever the results say. And it's a 5 versus a 5. So yeah, nothing. <laughs> okay, the submarine sitting in that position as well. We have a plus 2 on this roll. 7 versus a 1. So we've maxed out that convoy line. We're looking at 3 damage. This sea zone, a 10. We're going to roll for that one as well. Uh, again, we get a plus 2 on our dice roll. <coughs> 5. Versus 5, so we get plus 2, and we've maxed out that convoy line as well. So he has a total of 5 bucks taken off of him this turn, which is nice. Now, here we have an attack coming in against his units here. Now, I've spoken with him, and he says he wants to submerge his sub right off the hop. And makes sense, because therefore he could, in theory, attack us the subsequent turn. So I have 3 destroyers, 1 heavy cruiser, 1 light cruiser, and a sub. So let's line up some dice here. So a heavy cruiser is 6. Light cruiser is 5, 1, 2, 3, and then we have 1 at 3. So these are the dice we're going to roll. He has 1 at 6 for his heavy cruiser, and 1 at 4 for... <coughs> sorry, heavy cruiser would be um, coastal defense ship, and uh, destroyer would be for the green dice there. It would be rolling a 4. Let's see what the results are. 1 hit. And our on our end of things, we have none. Look at that. So our submarine was the blue dice. And so we're going to take that one off as the hit. Round two. And he gets to roll both dice as well. Isn't that something? One, two, three. Three hits there. And nothing on him. So, yeah, we've managed to take him out, but we did take a submarine as a loss. Boom. And we've assisted our, uh, our, al uh, our allies, our, our, what's it called? What's the classic phrase there? Our, hmm. Yeah, I can't remember. I'm, I'm thinking the word bedfellows. Unusual bedfellows? Is that the phrase that Churchill coined? I can't remember. But yeah, um, there we have it. We've captured A23, taken out two of his ships, and the Kriegsmarine is effectively gone at this point, apart from a transport and a, a few submarines on the map. Now let's take a look at Terida over here. So that is two of our militia against... <coughs> two of our militia, as well as um, one of our infantry against his... One, two against his cavalry at 2. Now I believe I just sent 2 militia in there. Yep, that's what I wanted. So let's see what those results are. This could be a very long battle. Unfortunately, the nature of these things with so low odds. Hey, one hit. Never mind. And one hit. Alright, so we take off a militia. He takes off a cavalry. And we've captured our territory back. Is it worth it? I don't know. <laughs> All right, um, I believe that is all there is to that. Let's take a look at Kiev now. Let me just double check. One, two, two, three. Yeah, all right, Kiev it is. So, <coughs> Kiev is going to be a fun one. We have a lot of dice to roll on this one. It's probably one of the biggest, bigger 
battles. It's the biggest one we've fought anyways. So we have one at seven here. Um, I might just copy these dice. I think that would be the best. And that's four. There. And then we'll get to the rest afterward. Ah, you know what? We could roll a ten for them now. Now, it is a city territory, so keep in mind that all of our stuff, land forces, get knocked down by one. Uh, so that means motorized and infantry all are down here. All the militia are at zero. Uh, like I said, infantry is at one. And these guys here, the three cavalry plus two light armor, are at twos. Now, the airborne unit, because he's coming from the air, and it doesn't make sense that he'd cross the river if he can get there by parachute, it makes sense that he could roll a higher number. So I'm going to roll, let's say, this green one. I know it's not the right color, but, you know, whatever. I could com uh, compare it to here. Now, also, the uh, <coughs> the um, these guys can roll. The two artillery, let's see if they score any hits. Now, we'd just be taking off on the militia, so I'm not too terribly worried about that, because the militia aren't even participating. No hits on that side. And now we're going to roll for our, our happy dudes over here. It's a lot of dice. When you throw this many dice, sometimes they are uh, a little bit cocked. I think we got, a, well, we didn't get too many hits. Looks like all of our teal dice are twos, so they all missed. They all missed. Now, I see our ble uh, blue dice, which I believe are, um, and we got one hit off of them. So, boom. Blue dice being our uh, cavalry and light armor here. The green dice would be threes. And then it looks like our aircraft hit two hits. So two hits there. So in total, on our first round, one, two, three. Just three hits, eh? One, two, three. Yep, that's about as what we expected. We didn't expect it to be too, <coughs> too crazy with them on the first round. Oh, we still get to roll more. Don't, don't you worry. We're going to roll a little bit more here yet. So I'm going to just shuffle these all together. Ah, there we go. Right off the table. <laughs> Let's put them back. Okay, so we get to roll another ten dice. So just keep in mind that what I'm rolling here, oopsie daisy, is for my infantry, rolling at ones, and also our motorized. So in that first batch, that first batch, how many dice is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in our first batch, we rolled ten, and uh, with only one hit. Let's see what the second roll of ten gets. We only score on ones, so that's another hit. Okay, our third roll. Well, that was almost a one, and nothing else. Okay, now we get to roll for five motorized units as well. Dee, 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 dee. Nope, nothing there. Okay, so four hits. Now that's uh, a little below what we wanted to have, but nonetheless, hey, we'll take whatever we can get. Okay, so he's rolling a lot of high numbers. <coughs> And these guys right here. Ah, okay. So he's rolling 10 reds, and I've separated the reds. I've separated the reds from the oranges because the orange doesn't really matter too much, but the reds don't get target selection, and the oranges do, and the teal for that matter does. And these all roll at 5 for hits. Uh, 1, 2, 2 hits. Let me just double check that. 1, Two hits, yeah. One, two. Beep, 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 beep. Put them there. And now uh, these. And this one. Okay. So these are target selection. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is above average. <coughs> Nine hits. All right. So I wanted to flip over this card here and show you guys what I suspected would be the first round of hits. 8.6 on the first round of combat. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 8.6, so he's slightly above average, and I'm two below where I wanted to be. So not too bad. We'll review that a little bit later on. Okay, let's take off some casualties. So he takes off four hits. Now, he did tell me what he wanted in what order he wanted, and he did say take off his militia first, and his uh, two artillery second, since they don't roll that good, and after that, he wanted his infantry. Um, 
So three, just one, four, four hits there. All right, so next up we have yeah, four hits there. And now on my end of things, <coughs> I have to take off nine hits, but um, two of them are my selection, so I'm gonna take off two militia. And he gets seven target selection against my um, vehicle class. So in that case, I suspect what would be best for him is to take off one, two, three, four, five, five, and uh, six, seven. And that's all my vehicle class. Well, I have three more vehicle class units, but hey, you know, that's effectively it. All right. Now we adjust where everything sits on the board. Do, 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 do. These infantry go there. This guy's coming down to twos. And we'll continue on from there. I'm going to just uh, get rid of some of these extra dice because we have to kind of calculate each and every turn. All right, moving on from there. We have... Uh, <coughs> that. And here we have three... Uh, you know what? That doesn't really matter at this point. Yeah, teal stands for two. All right. Yeah. Two. All right, that's ten. All right. Um, and then we get to roll for his stuff as well. Let's roll for ours first. So here's ten of ten. At, oh, here's a bunch. Let's set this up. Okay. <clears throat> Our air hits uh, one target selection. Then we have one hit from the air. And then we have one, two, three, four, four hits there. And just double check. Actually, that doesn't tell me anything. One, two, three, four, four hits. One, two, three, four. Yep. All right. Don't fall off the table. There we go. <laughs> okay. So here's the next batch of ten. Come on, get those quick. Next batch of 10. One, I think just one hit on this round. Yep. So that's 20. Let me just double check <coughs> how many of these guys I have. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. All right. So here's a third batch of 10. One, two. Yeah, third batch of 10. Nothing on this round except for one. And that being the third batch of 10, we now need to roll these three plus that one. So four. Four, and then we have a bunch of militia. One, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 militia. Should we roll the reds, or is that too presumptuous? Five. Four, five. Did I say 15? Yeah, all right, we'll save the next batch for later on. My head is only so big to keep all that info in. <coughs> so one from there, two, two hits, one, two. And now we roll 10 red dice. And that would make a nice even 15. And this is all at once, so there should only be one or two hits. One hit. Ten hits total. And that'll do. Hopefully that's big enough and I was slow enough that you could pick it up. Eleven hits total, rather. Okay, um, that is it for us. We had... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Plus these four, plus those ones. The AA and the rest don't do anything. Now on their end of things, they have still four, six, seven, eight, nine militia, and then they have a bunch of infantry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I think we could safely roll all these together. Ready, rolling. I have so many extra dice here. 
Okay. So first the reds. One. That's at five. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. And for these ones, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. Perfect. And it takes out all my motorized. So let's see what the results were supposed to be for this round. Now, I overshot by a bit. I was supposed to be 9, um, and I got 11. And he uh, got 6.6, .6, so he got 7. So the more dice you roll, the easier it is. <coughs> or not the easier, but you get what I mean. So 11. So I'm going to take off 11 of his dudes. Um, he has 9 here. So we're going to take those off. And we're just going to duplicate this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're going to take off one of those as well, leaving him with 8. So 9, 10, 11, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And on his end, he gets to take off three target selection for mine. These ones. And then I take off four hits, and I'm going to take off my militia. Not all of them, just a couple. There. All right, moving on. Um, moving on. So let's roll. Let's roll. <laughs> Okay, we're going to grab these three again. And then we have 30, an even 30 this time. Um, these teal dice. Get over here. So that's 10. <coughs> so we're expecting about 8 hits in total this, this round. So we have 1, 2, 3. 3 hits. 3. One of them being a target. Uh, no, one of them is not a target selection. Just three regular hits. The next ten. D -d 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 -d. One. Just one hit. Two. And next ten. One. Another one hit. Okay, um, that's an even 30, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 in this guy, so I forgot about that guy. And by that guy, I mean the uh, militia, ah, uh, not militia, airborne. 5, 10, did I say 11? 9, 10, 11, so we could roll it all in one. So the reds are at uh, once. Oops. Move those. Actually, if these didn't roll, that means that we're missing a couple that should be rolled. So that's going to come down the chute as well. Unless something got messed up. I'll have to review that later on. One, two hits. Two hits in total. One, two. All right. <coughs> Maybe that's how they fell off. I can just delete that. Okay, and on his end, he has eight. Eight dice rolling at five. Three, four, five, one, two. And these are all at fives. He has no need for target selection. And he's got two hits. So, we had seven, he had two. In this round, we were undershot. I can't remember exactly what it was, but there we have it. Two of ours, we're going to take off two militia. And he takes off his eight. Sorry, not eight. Seven. Um, seven of those. Okay, and I'm going to roll for his last... Last unit. Nothing on the way out. So we rolled a 10. Let's roll a handful of our dice. <clears throat> How many is this? 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One. Just one in the first round. So let me just roll it one more time in case there's been a. Oh, you know what? I'll roll it. 
two more times just because there's not that many dice. Nothing on that round. I'm rolling for all 30 of my infantry. Two, two hits. <laughs> just as an overshot. Um, and now let's roll for my nine. So I'm going to remove one of my dice. Nine militia. Just to make it, I like to overshoot. That's what Captain, what is it, Captain G does. So I quite like that. Nothing there. Nine dice. And I get, I still get to roll for my airborne at two. Missed. Okay, so two versus his nothing. I believe that takes out his last unit. All right, and that's the end of that com combat. So I'm going to gather up some dudes over here. Now, it might be difficult to say who was the, the winner in that combat, but I think it was worthwhile achieving. Um, by my calculations, I could be off of this, but if it goes roughly to this, we would suffer 18 hits to 22, and most of ours being, or a good chunk of ours being, uh, let's say, a few of ours anyways being militia as opposed to, to his being some of the more beefier types of units that cost four bucks and the like like mountain infantry and the rest, so I consider that a sufficient victory for our purposes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we, we know we have 30 infantry left. We know we have 9 militia left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, we have 9 militia left. So let's take off some units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These guys are gone. And we can add our airborne unit to the mix. I didn't need to bring these over here. I kind of forgot I had them out. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. There we go. All right, now the 74th Army is in Kiev proper. And he has lost all these guys. Boom. Now we, have, of course, lost our cavalry and light armor as well. So that's not ideal, but hey, you know, we can take, take what we can get. Did I delete my tactical bomber? I did delete my tactical bomber. Alright. Tactical bomber. Yep. Yeah. Alright. <coughs> um, I do think that is all of our combat moves. Yes. So it's moving on to non-combat, what we're going to do. So, actually, you know what? Let's adjust the income tracker. So we captured Torita and Kiev. So that's four bucks. And we captured one from the Japanese. So in grand total, we've gone up five bucks. 39, 44, the Japs have gone down by one. And one, two, three, four bucks down with those guys. And that is the scoop. Now we move on to non-combat. Um, non-combat. Let's do the air first. One, two, three, four, five. We land the air units here in Morel Kursk. And our transport, how far can it get? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, let's go here to Tulipetsk. Okay, what do we do about eastern Ukraine? Well, we don't want to be surrounded in Kiev, so we're going to move up some units. We're going to move the anti-aircraft gun. We're going to move some infantry. So from uh, Oral Kursk, we moved uh, anti-aircraft gun. So far, six infantry. We have three additional militia that can come up as well. From Dionetsk Kuban, we move one infantry and five militia. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I believe that will do it. So my logic here is if he decides to attack Eastern Ukraine, he has to devote a sufficient portion of his resources to go in that direction. And if he does, then that means I am in a position to either counterattack him in Eastern Ukraine... And if he decides to go into eastern Ukraine, encircling Kiev and attacking both areas, well, then he will be suffering uh, sufficient hits over here to make the endeavor somewhat worthwhile, although not entirely so. And the debate is if I should leave my fighters and such in this territory as well, because he's probably going to come in there with full strength. Hmm, I'll think about that for a little bit. All right, non-combat, we're going to move three militia down from Kaluga Oblast. From Tula Lipetsk, we're going to move three militia as well to Oral Kursk. Yeah, we're going to move one Soviet, ah, you know, one Soviet airborne to Tula Lipetsk. We're going to move one, 
two infantry. Hmm. You know what? I think we're going to keep them there. Going to keep them there, and we're going <coughs> to move from Smolensk 1 infantry down to uh, Royal Kursk. Yeah, Royal Kursk. Four, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16, 14, 18, 19, 20. So we're roughly on par. And so we could overshoot it a little bit. We're going to move those two militia down south. And one extra infantry, because why not? And so the two infantry that are parked here, we're going to send across to Royal Kursk as well. That should still give us enough of an edge to deal with, uh, and, and not great numbers, to deal with whatever comes in here. And so we're going to send one infantry up here and one infantry up to Col Kola. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that situation. This uh, seaplane is going to come back and land here in Leningrad, having done its duty. <coughs> okay. Don't delete all these. Over on the far east, we're going to move one infantry from Angara to central Mongolia and two infantry from Novosibirsk to Angara. We also wanted to rail a couple of units. I forgot about that. So let's say these two units from Baltic White Sea. Actually, let's say just one unit from Leningrad and Baltic White Sea. They're going to come racing over here by rail all the way to Boryatia. That's where we're going to go. We figure we need to strengthen up that position slightly. Um, fun fact for people is if you, people kind of neglect that you can rail stuff via rivers as well. So if I had a unit sitting here, I could technically rail him all the way up north here if I wanted to, if memory serves. Yes, that about does it. So let's go to the place unit phase. We're going to build a railway. Do you have railway tokens here? No railway tokens. None. None, none, none. I'm pretty certain I've seen some. Maybe in the facilities up here. There we go, railways. We're going to connect this railway from Angara to here. And we're also going to rail uh, add that railway here connection. Perfect. That's pretty well what we want. Okay, that takes care of those two. We're going to remove the damage on the factory. And we're going to place these two T-34 tanks here in Oral Kursk as well. Um... Let's deal with the far east side first. We're going to place two infantry in Oasibrisk. We are going to build a militia in Irkutsk, as well as one in Boratia. And then we had a plan here to build this one in northern Manchuria. Although, because I gave my uh, Japanese counterparts a list of what I'm going to do, then uh, they might <laughs> say that I've passed that point where I could do that, because they may have recaptured the territory. If that is the case, then I'm, instead of this militia, I'm just going to build another infantry somewhere else. So, my major factory, D -d 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 -d, improved factories, gets a major factory, can produce eight instead of five. So, if I reduce the amount of units <coughs> by the equivalent portion in Royal Kursk, that leaves me with five units I can place this turn. Um, because I, I had uh, three damage on it, so that amount leaves me with, I suspect it'd be roughly this amount left over. I can find a nice place for them. Okay, now the question is, are they going to make their attack against eastern Ukraine as well as 
Kiev. I don't think so. I don't think so. Let me just uh, take a quick peek at cities. Surround so dead. Dee -dee -dee. <laughs> my stud gives a defense penalty of my F3. So 3, 6, 8, ah, let me see. 30 times 3 is 90. 90, de -de -de -de. Yeah, I think we still got a decent edge on him. <coughs> yeah, I think we got a decent edge on him. So I'm not too perturbed. If he does capture that territory, well, you know, we might just make another swing and try to hit his territory as well, and he'll be sufficiently decimated enough that things will get interesting. So he may decide not to do that, and if he does, then he, much of his forces will be diminished at that point, and, and we'll have to play that one by ear. Hmm. Four, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times four. Twenty-eight. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not too bothered by it. You'd have to divert his forces in half, essentially, to capture both territories, and I'm not too bothered by that. Okay, so attack the bomber lands there. And that concludes my turn with one muck left over. Like I said, if I can't place this militia here, instead I will build <coughs> one uh, one infantry somewhere else, like Smolensk, I think would be an appropriate place to have them. And that is it. That is all for the Russian turn. Oh, you know what? I forgot to roll to uh, the Republic in Spain. We get to roll one dice for them. I believe the number we need to roll is eight or less. We've been pretty lucky with it last time, and we got it. So we're gonna get one infantry in Madrid. Actually, no. Let's put it in Western Andalusia. Sure. Western Andalusia. All right, gentlemen. That is everything. Um, thank you all for watching, and I will talk to you later. Cheers. I forgot to collect income, so I'm looking at 44 bucks here, plus some bonuses. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. 49 bucks to spend on the subsequent turn, which if we add it to our existing amount that we have, we will set a solid 50 for the next upcoming turn. I'm quite pleased by that because we see that the Russian, uh, the Germans, though they have bonuses and such, they're only at 51. Um, if you add there, three bucks for, what is it, three bucks for Romania, three bucks for Sweden, you know, we're looking at 57, I believe they have a couple extra bonuses that they have for that as well. Let me take a quick peek. Of course, we're not just facing those guys, so three, uh, three, four, five, six, six, yeah, so yeah, we're not, we're not too far behind. Of course, we're looking at the, the Japanese as well, <laughs> so it's not like we have too much of an edge on anybody, we, we're basically on par with the Germans, and and anything uh, the Japanese threw on us is extra that we have to deal with. Thank you all for watching. Cheers.